Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. This is React. Oh, uh, T, what do you How you doing? And this is going to be my episode recap of Basketball Wise Season 11, Episode 23. Shots poured, shots fired. Well, the episode opens up and they are still in Mexico. And they are getting all warmed up to the idea that Laura is back in the fold. So, um... Uh, Brooke and her BBL decides to attack Cheyenne. Cheyenne, you funny one years old. You don't have no kids, no man, no life. You don't have nothing going on. Well, she is a whole doctor. That might be something she had going on. You know, working on her PhD and whatnot. But, hey. <laughs> We're gonna say that's just nothing, girl. All that video vixening you were doing on your back, uh, and what was the last basketball player that ever in even entertained you, Brooke? And then, um, Laura told her, "Damn, girl, you don't ever change." Uh, yeah, and you didn't either because you, you getting on my nerves already. So, um, what's her name? Yes. See how forgettable she is? Laura apologizes to Jackie. And then Brooke and Evelyn get into it and... Evelyn still brings up Jason. What you need to be worried about is your man. Well, what you need to be worried about is all that man you don't have. Okay? Now, I don't like to toss D's up in folks' face and the pins and the men and the whatnots. But, girl, what are you doing at this point, Evelyn? Besides, you know, being the basketball wife that never was. <laughs> I'm just saying. So. Of course, you still going to always take up for uh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wasn't gay bashing. Well, in a way, she was. But then she goes on to say, uh, Well, I can't be gay bashing because I'm a little gay myself at times. Well, we're going to find that out later on in the episode. So, Evelyn, she says that, you know, She's not going to have anything against Laura Govan because she was out laid up with uh, Shaquille O'Neal. The thing about it is, though, I don't think that Evelyn had much interaction with Laura because I think Laura and Old Gloria were gone by the time Evelyn took over L.A. Her and all her evilness. So the other two girls, um, they go to Angestil. We'll see how forgettable she is. Anyway, <laughs> they go to yoga and, um, you know, Brooke and Brandy. See, Brooke? See, Brooke? See what the vets do? You see what happened with Jackie? Jackie knows how to, you know, weave herself back into the fold, even though it's ass kissing to me. But either way it goes, that shows what an OG knows how, knows how to do. And Evelyn knows how to put her SHI to the side in order to, you know, get together with um, Brooke. You see that? And Jackie. You see that? That's what OGs do. They don't just sit up there and harbor stuff. Now, you are learning because later on in the episode, we're going to see, right? So, they make up Brooke and Brandy. Right, because Brandy was your real friend, just like she was Horse Teeth Malaysia's real friend. Move right along. So, they go to a tequila tasting, and the tequila has actual worms and that a scorpion oh baby nothing with me being a scorpion at all can make me drink one okay now i have seen scorpions 
literally. And I told my sister when I see them and they run from me, they must know. But I'm joking. I knew not the with no scorpion, okay? Period. And the, the human ones either. So, Jennifer realizes that she's not going to be able to maneuver around Jackie like that, like that either. So, she agrees to go with Jackie shopping. And, again, that OG thing comes up. And I don't mean OG that was formerly on the show. I mean original basketball wives type stuff. They know how to put BS to the side for one, the good of the show, and two, good of the check. You know, especially since Jennifer's entire basketball wives checks is uh, about to start going on Tristan's, Kristen's, whatever his name is, restitution. Because he went to jail. He went to jail. So, that's what I'm talking about, about Brooke getting her wheels turning. Yes. Since Jackie's cool with Jennifer now. Not saying she cool with me. Because I'm going to hold a grudge and be stank or dank with my brick booty. I'm going to go ahead and invite her to Jennifer's um, bachelorette party. And girl, when I tell you that they are going to enjoy themselves at their bachelorette party, then they get to see how fun Jackie is. It's going to be leather. It's going to be laced. It's going to be wonderful. So Jennifer is so generous. She invites Giselle to be a part of it too since she just got married. And Brooke agrees, and Brooke gives her a flocker. Hey, girl, this is your flogger. Boy, <laughs> when my sister watches my videos and I mock Brooke, she absolutely tears me apart. Why is it taking you so long to get your words out? I said, have you seen Brooke lately? That's how Brooke talks. <laughs> I mean, she's strictly valley, okay? And so they commence to having a good time. Then they play this game. And they talk about, you know, as usual, the never have I ever game. And, uh... They come up with some easy questions. Never have I ever this. Never have I ever that. And uh, Jackie still is on that. That she don't suck balls. Okay, girl. I don't know what's keeping their marriage together for like 32.5 years. But okay. I mean, you know, Jackie is old school. Back in the day, day. Back in the day. It was taboo. For black women to go down. But we would expect the men to go down on us. And we thought this is now was disgusting. So if you grew up in that era, mm, she, that's probably why she can't do it. But uh, men like it. <laughs> and she likes to do what men like. So there you go on that. And then... Um, they do the little nasty game and they say, well, kiss the person that's closer to you. And Brooke and Evelyn have a passionate, passionate kiss. Now, now mind you, Jackie and Eva went down like that, like that. I think she does, uh... Doug on holidays, I think that's what she said. But <laughs> but we find out that Jennifer has never used a vibrator. The fuck? See, that's why you keep getting involved with these dumb ass scammers. From Tim on down. Because he was show before he decided he wanted to murk his nephew. He sure was a giving up those stores and opening them up behind Miss Rabbit's back. And that's 
giving that was giving scammer tease right there. She sued him, y'all. Miss Robbie sued Tim, and then she had the audacity to sit on his side of the building when he, because of his involvement, check this out, because of his involvement with the murk of his nephew, he has been taken away from her. Andre has been taken away from her. Her son, who was Andre's father, was taken away from her. And both of her baby daddies were taken away from her. So, in essence, technically, even though Tim is alive and well in prison, but he's in prison, Miss Robbie is in her age. She won't see him because he's going to spend the rest of his life there. And she'll never see him outside of jail again. And the only person that she has left of her bloodline, direct bloodline, is Tim's son. I guess Tim said, if I got to go to prison, this just going to be my son available, child. Because them other ones, they got to go. Child, when I thought about things, I was wondering, as evil as Tim is, I was wondering to myself, hell, did he have his own... Uh, Brother murked shit. I mean, he was some allegedly, allegedly involved in some stuff. So all I got to say on that, I said all that to say is Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. That's why you don't know yourself, girl. If you knew yourself, <laughs> like I know myself, <laughs> baby, you could survive without the young scamps, if you will. Trying to walk down the aisle. You know that man going to jail. Girl, I know you didn't. Stop. And then on allegedly false imprisonment of a person. Well, then he was convicted of that. So why am I using allegedly? But you know how we do. We have to see why. Move right along. Well, you know Jacea used them, don't you? Because she is a homosexual. And baby, that's all they can do. Remember what Carmel said. She went from... Real dickly to the uh, plastic. <laughs> hey, hey, Carmel. Boy, that's the wrong way to stay with me, girl. Speaking of Carmel, I want some caramel cake. Every time I look at her, I want some to caramel. That's like caramel cake, caramel ice cream, caramel sundae. Do you remember when McDonald's sold caramel sundae? They don't sell them no more. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. The ice cream machine is always down anyway. Anyway, moving right along. So, Brandy calls Jackie out to the beautiful. Oh, boy, I wish I was in Mexico with them. She calls her out to the balcony and they have a conversation. And, you know, Brandy lets Jackie know that she was really hurt by what she said. You know that that really bothered me. And Jackie's way of. Of taking accountability. She did apologize, but what she said, well, I was really hurting. I was hurting and I was just venting to a friend. Why though? Why were you venting to a friend about Brandon? What did Brandon do to you? Exactly. Nothing but come back on the show. However, I do hold Brandy accountable. For trying to get in on the good foot with Evelyn. And then she realized that Evelyn was not going to budge in her decision to bring Jackie back into the fold. She realized that she had to as well. Then Jaseel fought, fell in line. And then uh, Jennifer fell in line. And then eventually, if she wants to remain on the show... Uh, Brooke is going to have to fall in line as well. That's just what it is. <laughs> Show them, Jackie. Didn't I tell y'all that she had to kiss the ring when I thought Jackie was gone? And wasn't going to kiss that, but I think she should have stayed out for a couple more episodes. Just, just show them what the rings would have been like without her. You know how Mel does. <laughs> hey! And move around. Mel from Love and Marriage Huntsville. For those of you who don't watch that. And then Jennifer goes into the spill of when they get back in to play the game. She goes into the spill of what her and Evelyn have been through. Well, Evelyn and you went through everything that you went through because Evelyn 
put you through the things that you went through. You were always a friend of her. Right? And when Evelyn married Chad, that's why y'all, another reason why y'all didn't get along. Because you were right about old Chad, Ocho Cinco, weren't you? You told her she was moving too fast. Now somebody's turning to tell your black ass that you move too fast because Christian is indeed, in my opinion, a young scammer. Now remember, everything's alleged in my opinion. It's for entertainment purposes only. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share, share, share the video. You're sharing is care. Now back to the episode. So she goes on to tell her how much she appreciates their friendship and this, that, and the third, and they make love to each other. No, just kidding, just kidding. In their, in their um, friendship type of way. I used to pick at my sister about doing that to my baby when she was spoiling her. I used to like, get out from over there in the cool spot making love to my baby. <laughs> my children love their auntie. Move right along. But guess who wasn't in the courtroom with uh, Jennifer? Yep, you guessed it. Evelyn. Evelyn said, no, my, my name been attached to many, too many other things. To be coming up in the courtroom with the young scam. But you could have told her that you felt like he was a young scam. I would have told her. Yeah. So the brown things off. Jennifer lets Giselle knows how special she is. Just to say, I had a good time. And Giselle, by the way, girl, you know, like I said, you know, down from West Point, Mississippi. Did I tell you, you big little for bitch out? Yeah, y'all have a couple of rings, too. We have 12 championships and no losses. Y'all have 12 with four losses. So, I think we're better. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, go Big Lord. But anyway, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, just you say, oh, yeah, good time. And then she's like, well, you know, girl, this is a I'll show you and I'm drunk, so don't bother me tomorrow. Yeah, Jennifer. I've already said how I feel about you and that young scout. But girl, go on, live your life. Hey, hey, hey. I just hope you don't have access to your bank account. I'm just saying. So Jennifer rounds things off, says she don't want any more tequila for the rest of her life. And girl, as drunk as you were, I can understand. And that, my friends, in this episode, this was a fun episode. I am glad that they are getting along and back on track and being mature. Because I don't like gang up and I don't like the whole, I'm going to be over here, you're going to be over there. Even if, you know, you have to bring in drama. And that, like I said, with that, I'm going to end the episode. That really did end the episode. It was, again, it was fun. And I really enjoyed the episode. Um, please come on in and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell button. You will be notified when I upload a video. Share, share, share the video. Why? Because sharing is caring. And as I do when I close, I'm going to chuck them to the side.